Good morning, folks. Here in the last two days of 2020, we'll be going over the AGU fall meeting highlights. Tomorrow night, we're also hoping to have part three of our series on Earth's catastrophe cycle. But right now, we're at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet. There are indeed some motions indicative of local coronal instability near center disk on the south, but they are non-eruptive and are trailing behind these active regions. Surrounding the sunspots are a number of filaments, the thin, coherent dark lines and those you see extending off the side into the sun's atmosphere. Thus far, they are all stable as well, but that can change in minutes. The next certain space weather to come is a solar wind enhancement from the coronal holes. It is likely to be moderate intensity only, however. Let's go to the top video recommendation of the day. Dr. Robitaille released an excellent piece on the nuclear reactions in the sun. Basically, an enormous energetic aspect of the sun is being ignored in the standard model, and it's not taking place in the core. Most notably are the magnetic forces inside. If they weren't neglected in terms of transmutation of elements, they would also have to acknowledge the spring jerk magnetic release mechanism and solar activity, and they're surely not about to do that. Good video over on Sky Scholar, check it out. And speaking of videos to watch, this is obviously something we saw a few times in the recent series on Earth's Catastrophe Cycle, Parts 1 and 2, and there are two important points to make here as I see some people thinking it's doomsday. Folks, this happens on Earth in a cycle. Humans have survived every one of them, and we all come from survivors. It's in our DNA. But furthermore, Gothenburg, Lachamp, and Toba were far worse than the others, Lake Mungo, Mono Lake, and the Vostok Greenland event. Not only did humans survive the last one, but they had no warning, and I bet what's next is more like Lake Mungo or Vostok rather than Toba or Gothenburg. Now let's get over to the top science that leads us into the new year from the AGU fall meeting, and today we'll do the solar forcing. Confirmation of the already well-described solar forcing of the East Asian monsoon over decadal scales with the 11-year sunspot cycle, and in that same vein of long-term forcing, from one to four year lags to that decadal forcing, the temperature, precipitation, pressure cells, and upper jets follow clear patterns modulated by the sun. Both he and the previous author are cited a good deal in our textbook, and so is he. This time we're leaving the long-term forcing behind and seeing a short-term rapid modulation of sea surface temperatures by the solar wind, that's particle forcing. The rapid mechanisms fall mostly outside of kinetic and thermal coupling and into that realm of electromagnetic coupling, to atmospheric charge and cloud microphysics. And speaking of particle penetration, I only know one of these authors, but I'll get to know the rest of them here soon. They are working on quantifying the amount of Van Allen belt electrons penetrating in quiet and disturbed times. And this will be utterly important because we're watching two more people cited in our textbook deliver the modeling and future foundations of the equation for what those particles do when they penetrate. Up next, Space tornadoes. If you are familiar with how a hurricane can toss out a tornado in its spiral arm that can cause damage even outside of the eye wall and high wind zone. Well, the geomagnetic storm is like a global solar wind magnetic storm. The pulsations that induce some of the strongest bursts of current on the ground, however, are like the tornadoes tossed out of the side. Minutes time scale in the electrical forcing there. And last but not least, another of the missing drivers of that most technologically damaging and weather-working space weather effect. ULF emission from the magnetic field during solar storms contributes to the local electric field and the induction. That's a nice capping off of a story of a geophysically underappreciated star today. We greatly appreciate your support. You can learn tons more about the solar climate forcing in our climate playlist listed below this video on our channel homepage, just click our name, and at suspiciousobservers.org. Don't forget about Dr. Robitaille's video either. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.